What's going on Internet? IG here with another Linux distro review and today we're going to be having a look at the very recently landed Ubuntu 12.10 The Quantal Quetzal. <laughs> So here we are again, six months later, I am wearing the same hat as the Ubuntu 1204 review, just in honor of the occasion. And what has changed in these six months since Ubuntu dropped its long-term support release? Really not a whole lot. There's been a bit of spit and polish, they've tightened up some edges, they've definitely improved the online integration, keeps, which is, yeah, give or take, it's positive and negative. It does have both of those elements to it. But what does it all mean for you, the end user? Well, it definitely means a viable alternative to Windows 8, which is dropping very, very soon. And for existing Ubuntu users, it means tidier integration with all of the cloud accounts that we have spread across the internet nowadays, what with Windows Live, Facebook, Gmail, all of your Google stuff for that matter, Twitter, cloud storage, music players, and the list goes on and on. Of course, it also benefits from hardware improvements as per the latest release of the Linux kernel. We've got a few tweaks there from the GNOME, uh, from the GNOME side of things as well, just to make Nautilus, the file manager, work a bit better. So let's have a look at all of those changes. I'll try to keep this video quick and to the point so that you're not getting bored. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so as you can see, the interface has not changed much at all from Ubuntu 12.04. That is a very good thing in the face of Windows 8 that is completely changing everything. Now, the idea of Ubuntu 12.10 Quantal Quetzal was uh, cloud integration, as I've already mentioned. So, in that vein, we now have web apps that you pretty much when you open up a commonly used application on uh, your Firefox web browser, you can easily install a web app shortcut onto your launcher and thus it will open that application as a web app. So, for instance, if I open YouTube, it will open a Mozilla tab, uh, which will consequently open up the YouTube site. Yes, it's kind of kitschy, but it is a step in the right direction as far as making this uh, operating system more accessible to those who, let's face it, basically live on the internet. As far as actual real features are concerned, we also have a lot of online integration with the Dash now. So when it comes to searching for your photos, searching for uh, music, searching for videos, it will all pull in information from your various online accounts that you have linked up. And you can see here, under my online accounts, I have my Google, my Facebook, and I do have a Twitter account there as well. Uh, so you can see with a Google account, it will pull in Picasa photos, it will pull in photos into Shotwell, it'll publish uh, photos from Shotwell into your Picasa uh, online library as well. So that online integration is quite nice. It'll also open and uh, edit Google documents, which is a welcome addition. And of course, for Facebook and Twitter, it makes it very easy to integrate into Gwiba, which is, of course, the social networking client that has been around in Ubuntu for some time now. Uh, so very nice touch there. One thing that I would like to mention here is that the Compiz Window Manager, which is basically the, the part of the software that manages all of the effects where your windows pop up and disappear again, is quite smooth. Now, unfortunately, in the recording, it doesn't really capture that, but in actual life, it is very smooth indeed. The effects are gentle, and there's not really too much in your face about it. Having said all that, the overall responsiveness of this system is a little bit tied down to the fact that it is uh, very tightly integrated with the internet. So it depends on your connection speed as to how responsive all of these features are going to work. Uh, the dash and the overall uh, responsiveness of the Unity interface is a tiny bit sluggish uh, compared to Ubuntu 12.04. Not so much that you'll be complaining about it, but you might notice it on the upgrade, which brings me to my final point, which I will refer to a little bit further on in the video, is this operating system worth upgrading to if you are sitting happily on Ubuntu 12.04? Let me get back to that. Another, another feature that has been touted in this new release is the Dash Preview feature. So as you can see here, you can open up a preview by simply right-clicking on any item in the Dash, and it will give you the uh, yeah, preview of the item that you have selected. Of course, these preview features also translate into playable content, such as your music. So you can see here that I can search through my music collection, have a look at any particular album that I might have in my music library, right-click on the album artwork, and you can see here I've got a list of tracks that I can preview as I wish in the dash, which is pretty convenient. But again, it's a little bit pokey. Of course, look and feel wise, this distribution hasn't changed too much from its roots of the, the classic Ubuntu colors. Of course, the wallpapers are very nice indeed. 
But I will mention that the theme does look a little more cartoonish than what it did before. Nevertheless, it's a minor discrepancy. Theming is very, very easy on Linux distributions, as we're all aware. Of course, one of the most well-documented features about the Quantal Quetzal is the integration with the Amazon online store. Now, of course, that means that search results that you type into the dash are going to be linked as sent, slash sent through Canonical to the Amazon uh, web store where you'll be able to see search results for different items in the store. Now, I can understand this move on Canonical's part, they do need to find a way to keep the lights on, but it would have been good if they disabled this feature by default, informed the new users of its potential, and allowed them to opt in on their first boot of the system. Uh, considering that they have left it on by default, it's no real problem because you can easily disable it with a simple trip to the privacy store and disabling the online search results in the dash. And ta-da, you are back to being anonymous on the internet. Really, this Ubuntu release doesn't bring a whole lot of new features that are going to affect the Linux user uh, to the table. It brings a lot of great online integration that the average computer user and grandma is going to appreciate. Uh, but as far as actual features that a Linux user is going to care about, uh, there isn't a whole lot here to keep you busy. So having said all that, Ubuntu 12.10 is a very solid release, polished update to the, its, uh, its predecessor, the long-term support release. It of course rocks the latest Linux kernel and so you get the hardware support that you've come to appreciate from Ubuntu. You do get a slightly older version of Nautilus, the file manager, which is of course an important step because GNOME 3.6 as Nautilus is severely crippled as far as features are, is concerned. So it was a good move on Canonical's part to include the older GNOME file manager. But all of the other software is there kicking and ready to go, uh, including the latest LibreOffice, which of course finally includes the menu bar up into the global menu by default. Of course, the last few releases you've had to install an add-on, whereas now you can now enjoy the, uh, the wonders of the HUD menu that I've come to adore. So if you're happy with the way that your Ubuntu 12.04 system is running, then I don't really see any real reason to upgrade to Ubuntu 12.10, but it's definitely a very nice showcase of cloud integration on a desktop level. And for that, Ubuntu does deserve some major props. Of course, you can also notice up in the top right hand corner that the menus that we've all used over the last couple of Ubuntu releases have also undergone a bit of consolidation there just to make them a bit more simple on appearance and a little bit easier to clarify what's going on inside each of these menus. Ultimately, Ubuntu really does present a lovely competition to the Titan that is known as Windows 8 that will trip slash fall slash we shall see what happens. Ubuntu is maturing nicely, and it's easy to see with these lovely features that they've added into the rela latest release of Ubuntu. But unless you're a fan of the cloud integration that seems to be taking over the industry platform at the moment, then I don't see any major reason to upgrade to Ubuntu 12.10. Of course, if you're just starting out with Ubuntu and the open source community, then it is a fantastic start, and a worthy competitor to both Windows 8 and Mac OS X 10.8. Okay, so it's no secret that all the operating systems and devices that we are going to be using in our everyday lives are gradually moving towards the cloud. Uh, of course, that means that operating systems are going to be very tightly integrated with said cloud and your online life is going to be very well exploited by these various systems and devices. So my question to you is what do you think of Ubuntu's cloud integration with its Amazon services as well as all of the other services that you can tie in with it very succinctly? Of course, the Windows 8 versus Ubuntu 12.10 comments are always welcome. So give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And if you like this content on a regular basis, feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Google+, and of course you can watch my blog as well. With all that said, I shall leave you guys to go and enjoy the operating system because it definitely is a nice upgrade from the last precise pangolin. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.